something. So till we have a more formal introduction of uh, each other, uh, let's begin with what is the data. So uh, you will you can see that uh, the data structures. This syllabus is available on our institute website, and the structure is also available on uh, available on our institute website. So you can go and download the structure as well as the detailed course content. And if you have any query, you can uh, revert back to the uh, course uh, teachers, right? So if you have any query in data structure syllabus or contents, you can uh, get back to me. Or let's say you have a DCM query, then you can talk to Sir Ace Padil Sir. Or if you have uh, any DLDM query, VG Power Madam, and so on and so on. So VG Power Madam will be the class teacher. She will be conducting the very next session to your class. So uh, we have. Uh, the course title is data structures and the course code is UCSC 0303. And as you can see that uh, in the prerequisite, it's saying that computer programming is the prerequisite for the course. So uh, uh, while uh, conducting the session, so and while uh, uh, implementing some of the practicals uh, in the laboratory, we have an option of uh, uh, like selecting different programming languages. Now, in the first year, uh, you people have uh, gone through the C programming. I hope that uh, most of you people are uh, aware of basics of C programming. Uh, if if you are not that good with C programming, uh, that that is nothing to worry because as and when required, we will understand the, the features of C. Uh, so let's say. Uh, uh, you are not aware of some of the concepts in C programming, then we will learn those concepts and then we will implement the particular program. Now, what kind of freedom we can uh, take in this course is, let's say uh, one person from your class have learned OOP programming through C++, then uh, we can have a freedom of completing one particular assignment using OOP programming uh, or using C++ programming. So we can have a liberty of selecting a programming language, and there are some advanced features of the data structures, with which uh, maybe uh, during the unit six and unit unit five and unit six, we can even uh, go further and select the very advanced programming uh, uh, environments, like uh, of the not advanced. Actually, C is a very advanced programming language, but uh, entire operating system is written in C. Uh, I should say that a bit comfortable for the students rather than focusing on the syntax of a particular language. Let's say we want to focus on the concept of a data structure and a, a bit uh, tricky concepts of the data structures, which will which we will encounter in the unit number five and unit number six. In that in those cases, uh, we can even uh, think of uh, applying Python programming if we want. Otherwise, we can, uh, if you, let's say, you are comfortable with C and C++ or uh, Python, I can give a liberty uh, to select a whatever programming language you want to perform those experiments. But uh, as an a submission, we may have a, a, what we can say, restriction, like, okay, you have to perform this particular task in C, you have to perform this particular task in C++, you can perform this task in any of the language such sort of uh, 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 compulsion things or restrictions might be there uh, during the assignment. So uh, what are the objectives that uh, uh, we are having for to uncover this content? So, so uh, you can see that to learn basic concepts of C language. So in the course objective itself, uh, we have uh, mentioned that we are going to explore some of the uh, contents of uh, C languages and to become familiar with the data structures such as stacks, queues, and trees. Uh, then to analyze and solve advanced data structures like list, link list, queues. Uh, again, it comes with the stack keys and graphs. And then write programs on link list, doubly link list, and please. Now, here, if I have to say that, uh, which advanced topics I'm talking about where we might uh, explore the Python as an option. Like uh, if you are programming in the graph theory and if you are programming in the trees, which mostly will be covered in the unit number from the unit number four onwards. In those cases, if you are comfortable with Python, then I can allow you to program or we can say that, okay, Python is even a, a good option if you want to program in. But we will make sure that most of you people will be able to program it in C language. And if there are any difficulties, I'll be helping you out. I'll be guiding you out people. And if there is a required, uh, uh, there is a requirement that we must conduct a session on C programming, we will conduct that, uh, those also. 
now as an outcome what will what you will be able to uh, do once you complete this data structure as in a course you will find that defining the basic terminologies in the data structures what is a linear list linked list stats double linked list so what are the basic structures that are uh, present uh, in this course then choose appropriate data structure or optimal data structure for a specified problem and then analyze time complexity memory complexity of different algorithms and write programs of course uh, from the session one or the from the unit one we will be writing programs lots and lots of program in this subject uh, so what is data structure first of all like uh, right now i am sharing the screen with you people and there is a browser opened in which i have opened up a pdf file and uh, 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 I am scrolling down to this contents of uh, PDF file. So in the computer's memory, I'm sure that you are aware that computer have a, a, a processor, it have a cache memory or cache memory, and then it have a main memory. Those concepts will be covered in the CO subject. So let's say you have a ra random access memory or a RAM we call, or in general words, when we are talking about computer science students, we call it a, call this memory as even main memory. Sim simply a memory. So let's say you have a memory in your computer and now this memory uh, needs to store the data. For example, this file that I am I've opened right now is opened into the main memory of the computer, that is the RAM. Then how this file is stored in this RAM? How this file is stored in this RAM? So let me open up a paint. So I'm sure that you people are able to see the paint. Let's say uh, we have so draw right now let's say uh we have a cpu see? let's say we have this uh cpu right and in this cpu we have a processor let's say this this is a processor and on this uh, uh on this motherboard of a computer we also have a chip a green chip which we call it as an a ram so when we open up a file like this paint is also right now a program which is opened in a computer's memory so to open this programs this computer's memory is required so let's say this memory have uh, sections inside it so let's say this section one is called as address zero this is called as address one this is called as address two let's say this pdf file is opened in section one and this paint is opened in section two so paint program now when i'm dealing with the pdf file let me switch to the pdf file uh there it is this is my pdf file so when i switch to this pdf file my computer is accessing this memory zero and when i'm switching to this paint and i'm creating some diagrams that time my computer is accessing this say the memory one so to deal with this memory, computer have different structures, right? So how I can deal with this memory, how I can manage this PDF file in a memory, how I can draw this diagram in a memory, how let's say, I, how I can open up a browser, let's say I am using a Chrome and I, let's say I want to open a Chrome, then how this Chrome will be managed in, inside the computer memory section two. And computer has to switch between these programs like it has to go to the chrome then it has to go to the pant and it has to go to the pdf as and when required and that task must be very smooth to de do this job of switching the programs and managing the stuff like if i minimize this uh story if i minimize this paint and immediately you are checking out the contents of a pdf file and if i again maximize this paint you are still able to see the contents of this uh, uh paint that i've created but if I close this paint, and if I say, I, I don't want to save this, and now if I open up the paint program again, you will find that I'll, I'll get an entirely blank, fresh uh, whiteboard using which again, I can start drawing. So where were, where were those contents? Like there was a simple uh, uh, rectangle with some sections and I've written some words inside those. So where that entire data was and um, where it had been gone, so that this entire thing is happening inside the memory of a computer or the main memory of a computer and computer needs to optimally handle the memory. So for that purpose, uh, computer engineers have created some uh, predefined structures, predefined uh, uh, algorithms in which the computer's memory can be handled in a very effective and efficient way. So these programs, which 
are like see uh, when I'm using this paint, the paint is taking help of structures defined in the data structures. When I'm dealing with this chrome, uh, and when I'm checking out this bandwidth, or when I'm opening up this uh, file and uh, checking or scrolling it up and down, in the background of the uh, whatever the program is getting executed, every program is taking help of some predefined structures. So those structures are covered in the subject called as data structures, right? So this is a very important subject because each and every computer program, each and every computer software that we will be making use of indirectly, indirectly, will be making use of this predefined structures for improving the performance of that particular application. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about what is the evaluation policy. Now, we will be having a in-semester evaluation one, uh, then mid-semester exam, and then in-semester evaluation two, and then end-semester exam. And the weightages, you can see that the IAC component do have a weightage of 20%, uh, the uh, mid-semester exam have a weightage of 30%, and then the end-semester exam do have a weightage of 50%, out of which, EAC, it is very important that you must clear this exam independently. And uh, like, see, uh, very important thing, this is evaluation, this is not examination. So there will be no nothing like uh, this is IAC 1 test or this is IAC 2 test. We'll be having a lot of assignments. Uh, then this assignments might be one component of IAC evaluation. Uh, we might be conducting two, three quiz, uh, maybe one quiz each unit. So those uh, quizzes all together will be considered as one component of IAC evaluation. Then we might uh, have another tutorial or a written assignment, maybe three, four written assignments. So then again, those written assignments will be considered as one component of IAC evaluation. Another very important aspect of this uh, subject is, uh, I'm sure you people are aware of what is pro, uh, project-based learning, PBL. So this data structure do have a PBL activity, which we are going to consider as one of the IAC evaluation component. And in the PBL, again, the same story repeats that you have to form a group of three to four people in a single group and come up with the some problem statement, real-time problem statement, which can be solved with the concept of data structures and then uh, we will try to implement a solution in the data structures as an elaborate task. So again, this course do will consider PBL as one of the IAC components. So uh, we will have a combination of programming assignments, theory assignments, uh, quizzes, and the PBL for evaluating your IAC in semester uh, performance. Uh, and again, the MSc is a theoretical paper of uh, 50 marks. And again, EAC is a theoretical paper of 100 marks. So that will remain as a test. Now, this is about the IAC evaluation. So this is a brief introduction of what is the course code, what is a prerequisite, how, what are the learning objectives, and what are the learning outcomes, how the evaluation policy will uh, be there for throughout the semester. Now, uh, let's check out the course contains of data structures. Now, in the, uh, basically, the course is divided into uh, six units. And we can say that the first three units are like very important and very basic units uh, or a very basic structures that uh, we will learn. And from the unit number uh, third half section, like is the half part of the third unit, and from the fourth unit to the sixth unit, we will be working on some of the very important concepts that are used in a day to day life, not only the software or the computer, but if you are writing even if a very simple program, you will be using those these concepts. So we can, let's say, uh, consider that data structure uh, divided into two sections. Section one, very basics, uh, understanding and uh, uh, learning what is the importance of data structures and how the system works. And from unit three, uh, half section and uh, uh, up to unit number six, some of the advanced concept in the data structures, which are used by almost every software and not only about uh, uh, in the software, so let's say even if you are writing a very single program, let's say you are competing one in one of the competitions, or maybe or you are writing a program on a hacker rank, or maybe you are appearing for a campus drive, and there is a general problem statement given, then there is a chance that, there is a 90, 95% chance that you will be either implementing one of the sorting algorithm, or you will be implementing one of the tree algorithm, or you will be implementing one of the graph algorithm. So this is how the, uh, what is the importance from the unit number four till unit number six. 
uh, let's uh, look at the contents of all the units. So in the unit number one, we, we will understand what is a data type ADT. You are already aware of it. We will be just like brushing up the concept. What is abstract data type? When you people have learned C programming, that time you have encountered a lot of ADT types. Then uh, control structures, array functions, structures, pointers. I I am I'm sure that the pointers may not have been covered in a very deep uh, or maybe may not, may not have been covered with uh, full exchange. So we will be uh, paying a focus on pointers a lot and we will be writing a program in C to uh, understand the importance and uh, working of pointers. Then we will understand what is the algorithm, then the space and time complexity. So when I've opened this PDF file into the uh, into the browser, that time some memory is required by this PDF file to, to be shown in my uh, screen. So whatever the memory is required by this PDF file to open, we will call it as a space requirement of the PDF file or for this program and the time complexity. Let's say uh, you people are uh, computing the time for a particular task. <coughs> Let's say for arranging uh, five numbers in a uh, ascending order. So when you people arrange five numbers in ascending order, and let's say your computer is going to need uh, 10 minutes for that. So that 10 minutes might be the time complexity for arranging the 10 numbers. So space complexity, how much memory is required by the computer to run the program, time complexity, how much time the computer may take. So there will be like best, what is the minimum time required by the, uh, what is the least time that be below that uh, time, it is not possible to compute the task. For example, let's say there is a task X, Y, Z, and doesn't matter how much fast computer you bring into the operation, it is not possible to execute the particular task X, Y, Z uh, within five minutes. So the five minute will be the, what we can say, the, 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 the least possible the time complexity. Then we have an average time that doesn't, if we are increasing, let's say 100 numbers we have, then how much average time complexity may be there. And there is a worst case complexity, like uh, if you keep on increasing the numbers, then the time will increase and so on and so on. So we are going to learn uh, how to optimize this space complexity and how to optimize this time complexity. And many times it is found in the computer that if you improve the space complexity, the time complexity uh, 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 gets worsened. That is, if you are optimize, if you optimize the space, you lose the time, and if you optimize the time, you may lose the space. So it's a kind of a, a tug of war, like which to optimize. If you are trying to optimize the space, you may lose on the time. And if you try to optimize the time, you may lose on the space. So uh, it depends on which kind of application you are writing, whether you are writing a memory scare application or you're writing a very time bound application. So if you are writing a memory scare application, you will maybe focusing on how to improve, improve the space complexity of a particular software. But if you let's say you are working on some time bound uh, system, then you may be focusing on improving the overall performance of the system. And let's say you have abundant resources uh, available, like you have enough memory available, you have enough resources available, then mostly you will be you people will be working on time complexity. Nowadays, like you can see that uh, you know that the uh, memory is available at a very cheap cost. The hardware cost is very cheap and the uh, cost of hardware is decreasing day by day. So uh, let's say that mostly you people will be, whatever programs you will be writing and all, uh, most of them will be working on uh, improving the time complexity rather than improving the space complexity. But it doesn't mean that there is no importance of a space complexity because there will be scenarios when on in which you have to work on your space complexity uh, rather than focusing only on time complexity. Then there is a concept called as a recursion, then the tower of annoying. Um, I, I'm sure that you have heard this word of tower of annoying and many of us have uh, played a game uh, with uh, six, seven rings and uh, uh, a tower, and we used to arrange those rings on the top of each other. So um, that is basically a stack structure required for that particular thing. So we'll see what is a, a, a tower of annoying and all. Then we have a stack and a queue. Like uh, stack of books, we can keep a thing only on the top, and we can remove the thing only from the top. Let's say I have. I've created a pile of books. Uh, let's say I have I have started keeping books on the top of each other. Let's say I have uh, uh, book number one on the top of this book. I kept another book and then 
another book and then I another I keep on I keep on doing this and I'll create a pile of books. So what is doing is if I want to add another book, I can add only here. Or if I let's say I want to remove a book without disturbing this uh, stack file or without disturbing this arrangement, I should remove only the top book out uh, from the stack. So this is the stack structure in which you can keep the stuff only at the top and you can remove the thing only from the top. So this is the stack. We will learn in detail how the stack functions and what is the importance of a stack. Okay, and then we have then we have queues like I do. I really don't think that I need to explain what is a queue. Like uh, the first person in the queue gets service at the very first, and the last person in the queue gets the service very last. And there are different ways, uh, varieties in which we can arrange these queues, or there might be a VIP queue, we can, which we can call it as a priority. The person, depending on his rank or his or her rank, may get service. So that's a priority queues kind of a thing. So that is a that is about unit number two, a very important structures. Then the linked list. Let's consider a relay list wherein, uh, or maybe a, a, a token based strains when where you when wherein a person has to pass a token to the person two, and then the person two starts uh, running the race. So kind of a link list where is then wherein every component is uh, linked with each other. And there is a concept of hashing. Uh, let's say you have a list of thousand nodes, and to uh, let me go to the paint again immediately to explain what is a list and what is a linked list. Let's say I have I have a list with me of nodes. So this is node one, and there is a node two, and there is a node three, and there is a node four. And let's say these all nodes are linked. Right, so they have some link between each other. So I'll call this as a link list. Right now, let's say uh, you are on the you are at the node one. Here you are. This is one, two. This is three, and this is four. And let's say you want to travel from node. You want to reach to node number three. So what you have to do is you have to travel from one to two, and two to three you will reach. And let's say you want to come back to number four one. So again, you have to come from three to two and two to one. So this is a linked list. And let's say you have thousand nodes in this list, and you want to go to the let's say five fifth hundred node. So you have to travel from the node number one to all all together up to the node number five. So how to improve this? So improvement on this this kind of structure is called as hashing and all. So how to immediately go to the location where you want to reach? So that those things are called as a hashing when you have enormous of data and you want to locate the particular data very immediately, very effectively. This is called as hashing. Then the searching and sorting. If you have thousand numbers and if you are looking for one particular number, then we call that concept as an R searching. And let's say you have thousand numbers and you want to sort these all numbers in either in the increasing order or a decreasing order. We call this concept as an sorting, and there are variety of ways in which you can search or a sort. And again, if you improve the space complexity, you will lose the time. If you improve the time, you will lose the space. That is what you will find a lot in the searching and sorting technique. So once we complete these all basic building blocks required for constructive uh, understanding, then we have a concept called as an trees. And in trees, we have something called as an avial tree. And then we have a B, B plus three, hips, and its operations. Actually, these all things that hip, uh, every computer system is using a hip. Right now, your OS is extend, extensively using a hip data structure to manage its memory. And with B plus and B trees, you will be learning the subjects called as databases, database engineering. And if you have, uh, like, if you have used the banking application, or if you have used any of the application, that those applications behind the scene are using this B plus B three structures a lot for arranging the, uh, uh, their their uh, data in 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 the memory, uh, in the storage. So uh, this is these are the concepts which will be used to handle a huge amount of data in a very effective way. And a lot of computer programs of which we are using in day to day life are making use of these concepts. And then there is a graph theory. Uh, like, uh, let's say you have some optimization problem. Let's say you want to go to problem for point A from point uh, for, to a point B from point A. 
and uh, what will be the optimal way of reaching point B from point A? Or let's say uh, you want to print out what are the possible ways in, you, uh, in which you can travel a particular region. Those kind of concepts or those kind of problems can be solved using the graph theory. So this is the overall arrangement of the data structures and these six units are just the uh, basic concepts or uh, introductory part of our data structures that we can do as in the data structures. Uh, so this this will not be the end of the story of a data structure. So when we complete this VS code, rather than treating it as okay, I've learned data structures as in a full course, we have to learn, we have to understand that we have just started with the data structures and now this theory is going to be with us throughout our life as in a computer science engineer. And you will be learning a lot more about data structures as and when you progress in your career. So when we reach unit number six and when we clear the exam, we, let's not consider that, okay, the data structure has ended, the subject is over. No, in fact, once we complete this course, the data structure just starts and you will just explore a lot about it as and when you learn uh, for the subjects. So there are uh, three textbooks and two reference books. Uh, so uh, which one to read is the common question asked by the students when we uh, uh, take this course. So all three is the correct answer. So uh, this Tannenbaum book first is more than enough to learn all the concepts, but I recommend you people to check out all the books because they are very well written and uh, let's say you are confused in one of the concept uh, by reading the concept from the Tannenbaum, you'll find that the maybe the same concept is explained by uh, uh, the book Data Structures by and Pseudocode Approach by Richard F. Gilbert. Or maybe you will find that this Lipschutz book, third number book, is explaining a concept which is not a very well written in the book number one or two not very well written, maybe you are confused how this concept is working. So as and when you have a confusion in one of the uh, uh, author's uh, writing, you can switch a book and author and try to understand the concept. And again, then we have to come back to the first author or second author to better understand how he, uh, the author is explaining the particular concept. So I say that uh, uh, which book will serve the best? There is no one book. We have to read all these three books and even if uh, we have to explore more than even the reference book so all five books are very important if we are we have to really understand all the concepts of the data structures and let's say uh, which book have all the concepts all three books have all the concepts in fact all the five books have all the concepts right so if you take only one book you will find that everything has been covered very well but I strongly recommend we have to check each and every book which is written as an which is given as in a textbook as and when required. So this is about the data structures theoretical part. Let's let's immediately look at the laboratory look at the laboratory content. So data structures labor is in a uh, independent course. So this is a data structures laboratory, which is an independent course, and it has its own uh, learning objectives and outcomes. Mostly they are about <coughs> writing programs and implementing uh, programs to solve some problem. You can see that there is an independent four hour practical for the laboratory course with the independent two credits. So in the theory course, we have three credits. In the laboratory course, we have two credits. So overall credit for a data structure as in a single uh, entity, we have five credits. Three credits for the theoretical course and two credits for the laboratory course. And you will see that in the structure, we have a theory exam for the data structure theoretical part with, uh, with the three lectures, and we have a separate practical oral examination for the data structure lab. So you will be having a different IAC for the laboratory, and there is no IAC one or IAC two. There is this structure have a plain IAC in semester evaluation and the end semester exam POE, right, for the 50 50 mark. And in this IC again, we will have uh, programming assignments, theoretical assignments, uh, quizzes. So we will be conducting a quiz for theory part as well as for the laboratory part. We'll be having a program for theory as well as for the laboratory. We will be having a PBL mainly for the laboratory part. And it's some credits will be transferred into theory also. So uh, let's look at what are the programming rules. So here you can see that program based on the array structure. So these are the some pointers on which we have to implement different programs as an laboratory 
part. So you, here you can see that there is a list of almost 16 programs. So we have to implement bare minimum 12 to 13 programs as a programming task into uh, our data structures laboratory tools. And this each code program title has given you uh, what this program will be about, what it will be implementing. This is the laboratory. Again, you will find that the same number of groups have been listed as in our textbook as well as reference book. So this is about data structures, theoretical part and the laboratory part. Now I should take a pause. I request you people to please unmute yourself. And if you have any doubt, you are free to ask. Anyone have a doubt? Anyone of you? If you have any query, any doubt, uh, please feel free to ask me. So, Soham, Jatim, doubt, sir. <laughs> can I? Okay, can I? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Vivek. So, uh, thank you, Haile. So let me quickly go back to the content one more time. Three zero three. Yeah. So you can see that we have to understand or we have to revise some of the concept, right? Of uh, C. So I need some frank opinions from your people. Like, what is the level of understanding? Understanding of C in uh, for you people when you have completed the C programming in the first year as a course. If I give a simple task, let's say if I ask you to create array and print the array, how many of you will be able to perform it? So let's have this as a frank one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion. And we know that this is a second year course. We do not expect a full-fledged expertise in the programming. So I need some frank feedbacks. So I can work on it and I can uh, make sure that each one of us is uh, good at programming. So if I give a simple task of creating array and putting all the contents on the screen, the, I'm not as asking to sort anything or to arrange anything, just create it and put it on the screen. Okay, so I have uh, one response. Okay, thank you Vinay. And thank you, Jatin. Okay. Let me just conduct a simple poll, one simple poll. Let me stop the screen share. So I'll be creating one question. The poll will appear in a moment. So please attend the poll.
So it's a very simple question. Just for record purpose, I am opening up the poll to check out attentive needs. Ah, uh, some of the people have already joined using some other thing, which these people are not able to, I guess, attend the poll. There is one flaw. So, guys, you have to join uh, using the Cisco WebEx app. Maybe I recommend either uh, mostly use a uh, desktop or a laptop because uh, from the session one, uh, this is the introductory session. So, when we'll start with actual data structure content. From the day one session, I'll be writing programs, lots of lots of programs. So if you see the contents, it's mostly a data structure with uh, C programming. So I have to write the program and I'll be uh, setting out a small, small task each time I create. Let's say, for example, if I and uh, if I write a simple program, immediately I'll be asking what will be the output of it. And there will be some trick programs uh, which will have uh, output depending on what option you select. So in that, those cases, I'll ask you to write the write the program for the particular task, and I'll even give you a pause of I'll maybe take a pause of five minutes so the people can write a simple pseudo code, and then we will have a discussion on the code that you have written. So I I, I can see that there are eight people who have who are not able to uh, uh, submit their responses. I they have given it in using the thumbs up uh, option. Uh, emoji. So I recommend you eight people must uh, you must join using the some device which will be able to interact with the WebEx uh, polling platform, right? So uh, because I'll be using this poll option for sharing the questions and I'll be expecting the answers in the same way. So this is a demo like uh, the question in which the style of question I've created like can we use loops and all, and I'm expecting the responses from you people. So these polls will be there. Uh, there will be a lot of lot of polls. Like say in one session, I will be conducting at least two or three polls for Q1 question and answers. So it will be very interactive, right? So there's eight students who were not able to give the polls, or uh, maybe few of you have given the thumbs up. Make sure that you <laughs> join using a computer. And two people have given a response of no. I'll I'll share the result independently. And now this question, there is no need to share the result independently. But we'll make sure that the pe people who have said that uh, you are not able to do it, we will uh, work on it, and we will have some basic programming tasks, and we will have a separate sessions as and when required. We will conduct a dedicated session for the C. So our regular sessions for data structures core sessions will focus only on data structures and will cover only those concepts and we will have some extra sessions uh, for the people who need it for the C and C++ and we will have those sessions as and when required. So don't worry if you are not able to uh, do some tasks, no need to worry. We'll make sure that you will be able to do it. Okay. Uh, apart from this, anything from you? So some quick responses, if you want me to, if you want really, if you have any expectation in delivering of a lecture or delivering of a session, or you need some help, uh, please let me know in the chat window, or you can unmute yourself and talk. Basically, you need to teach us pointer structures because they were not taken that effectively. It's the response by Jatin. Thank you, Jatin, for the response. So, uh, 
having a computer is mandatory. Can we perform program on mobile? Uh, so a tool I uh, see guys. The first answer is I uh, I will cover pointers in very very detail. No issues. Uh, so what were what were my core strengths? I'm, I've been teaching uh, uh, programming languages as uh, since I've joined the institute. So my core competency was programming languages, is programming languages. So I, we will cover a lot of, we will put as much as time you need, we will put it in pointers, no problem. And we'll make sure that you understand pointers in very well uh, manner. If you will be able to use them very effectively, no issues. So uh, pointers I'll take in details. Very it's no problem. And the second uh, question is, do we really need to use uh, PCs or can we do it on mobile? I strongly recommend to make sure that you have a basic computer with you. Not, not no need to have a very advanced featured computer like a GPU and all that is not required. But if you have any PC that will uh, do the job, right? <coughs> if we want to buy a laptop for CAC programming, what or which laptop we should buy? Okay, so can you please tell the specifications for laptop programming for lab programming? Okay, so guys, uh, let's uh, put it in this way. So if you have a decent budget, if you have a decent budget, uh, I will recommend uh, Dell V3 that uh, that will cost you up to 60, uh, 60 to 62,000. Now Dell G3 comes with the uh, 8 GB RAM and uh, i 5 with the 4 GB of uh, GPU. Now, why GPU? We do have a courses uh, of machine learning and artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, also we have a course on ARV, ARVR, augmented reality and virtual reality. So now, those uh, tools like writing a program for machine learning, AI, ML, or a computer vision and ARVR needs a GPU. So uh, it will be good if you have a GPU uh, with you. So I, I should recommend that you should have at least 8 GB or 8 gigs of RAM i5 I uh, with a maybe 11th i5 I or 10th or maybe a higher version and a GPU with you. And if you have a SSD, that will be even better because SSDs do make sure, uh, do perform, do make a performance difference because hard drives do have a slower uh, response rate compared to the solid state drive. So make sure that you have at least a bare minimum to fix SSD and now a uh, very important part if uh, nowadays mostly cloud cloud is a common thing now uh, we are we have we are co conducting the cloud based programming like a machine a machine learning assignments and the computer vision assignments on google collab so google collab is an open source open uh, available cloud not open source openly available cloud platform and we can perform a very huge computing task for up to 24 hours time required task on Google Colab for free. So let's say you need just a basic laptop, a basic laptop with i3 processor and a 8 GB of RAM with the SSD will do the job. There is no need of GPU as such. Uh, in, in that case, you can perform your uh, GPU related task on Google Colab, right? Uh, uh, right now we are even partnering with the EduSkill and we are conducting the sessions of AWS cloud. So even uh, uh, we are planning to have those AWS subscriptions for the students. So if you uh, want a budgeted laptop up to 25,000 to 30,000, you can go for i3 with the basic SSD and 8 GB of RAM. Uh, that will be more than enough. Uh, let's say if I have to put in percentage, 90% uh, of programs you will be able to perform using i3 with the 8 GB of RAM and an SSD or a maybe even with the HDD configuration, that the, this laptop will cost you from 20,000, 25,000 to 30,000. If you do have a budget, uh, try to get a Dell, Dell G3. Any computer above Dell G3 or a, let's say Lenovo Legion uh, series, Legion series with i3 and i5 configuration with the dedicated GPU or 8 GB of RAM. So Legion, Lenovo Legion series also good and Dell G3 series also good. Anything above Dell uh, G3, that is a, a G5 or a G7, or maybe any other advanced uh, configuration, and Lenovo Legion above i5, uh, those laptops are more than enough, right? Uh, but that this cost will help you in performing the task. Uh, the re remaining 
10, 15% task, which we will be relying on Google Colab for performance. And uh, about the Institute, we do have a dedicated lab for AR VR with the uh, 8 GB graphical processing units and 16 GB of uh, RAM. And uh, we even have RTX processor server, dedicated server for AR VR laboratory. Uh, by the time uh, the course may hit for your batch that is in the third year, you will be using note that library. We have a dedicated laboratory of 20 computers with all equipped with the 16 gigs of RAM and a GPU and a dedicated server of uh, 6 lakh rupees which have RTX cards inside it. So uh, you can utilize those laboratories also. Right, and there is one question. I have a laptop, you know, with 2 GB of RAM. That will be enough, more than enough. So if you have a uh, already have a do have a laptop, there is no need to procure one for the second year. Whatever assignments we do have in the second year, uh, even your basic laptop with 2 GB of RAM, basically anything which is functioning and able to write a C program is more than enough for the second year. And there is again a question popping up. Is the Ryzen series a good? Yes, Ryzen is a very good series. Uh, Ryzen 3500 or Ryzen 5700, you can purchase any one of it. It has no issues. We are, uh, in fact, uh, if you see the pricing, uh, you will find the Ryzen series is a bit competitive compared to Intel. Uh, there is one common uh, query always I see, I've seen on in the web that the Ryzen series get overheated. But uh, I really don't think that is an issue because in uh, our institute, in our uh, CAC, we, I've seen many faculties are using Ryzen processors and the computers are doing very good, no problem. So if you are planning to buy a Ryzen series, that's not an issue. So what about Inspiron series? That is also good. See, as I said, uh, there are some advanced programming tasks, but we can manage those tasks using the Google Colab, right? Or even AWS. For that, you know, really don't need to purchase a, a computer. If do you already have a laptop, don't need, no need to buy it, one another one. But let's say you don't have one and you are considering to buy new one as let's say you don't have a computing a computing machine with you and you are considering to buy one then depending on your budget you can consider either i3 with the basic configuration and if you do uh, want to have your own computer with the all required configurations to com compute those 10 percent remaining tasks then consider dell g3 or a Lenovo legion series and above but if you have already a computer uh, computer with you, no need to buy. Whatever assignments we are going to give, at least in the second year, you will be able to perform those all programs on your computers, right? So basically that's the answer. So Inspiron series is also good. Okay. What is minimum graphic we need? So I, if you are planning to buy a computer with the GPU, I strongly recommend at least buy 4 GB of uh, graphic processor. Uh, you can buy either Ryzen or maybe you can buy either NVIDIA. If you are buying NVIDIA, buy GTX uh, series bare minimum 1050 or maybe 1050 Ti or 10, 1650 or Ryzen GPUs are also good. There is no worry about if you are planning to buy a Ryzen, but at least buy 4 GB because if you are paying a cost for a GPU, then at least buy some decent memory, uh, which will help you in writing the programs locally on your computer for AI, ML, and computer vision and uh, AR, VR. Any other question? Uh, because semester was offline, I can't, I, I, I wasn't able to learn C much more effectively. So, uh, uh, I think that that's not an issue, but try to get at least some working basic computer with you because we will be learning C. And if you have some trouble with concepts of C, no, no need to worry about it. We will work on it. We'll work on the concepts and we will make sure that you understand those concepts and then you will be able to write the program. And if you don't, if, if you have any problems, we will be arranging some uh, remedial lectures kind of a story for working on your C skills. So that's not an issue. If we want to buy a laptop, okay, that is already been answered. So can you please tell the specifications that is also been answered? Uh, do we have to buy all five books? So, uh, Shardul, 
uh, those all five books are available in the institute's uh, li library. I think you, if you are uh, Kolapur in Kolapur, uh, once the admission process completes, you can come to the maybe uh, you can just come for the uh, by taking a book from the uh, book bank, or you can come and get to your library card and uh, get those these five books from the library. Uh, five friends group each one taking a one book and then uh, circulating the books among each other will do the job. If you really want me to ask which one to buy, I'll recommend a Tannenbaum and Lipschutz. If you are considering purchasing the book, buy the Tannenbaum and Lipschutz book. Those books will be uh, uh, doing all the necessary job. But as such, I, yes, yes. Who is this? Okay. Uh, so, if you really want to buy only one book, I recommend Tannenbaum. Now, uh, uh, before buying the book, uh, let some time go. Uh, take these books from the library, read these books, because Tannenbaum speaks specifically in terminology of C. So, when we will read the Tannenbaum book, you will find that each and every concept of the data structure, the author is trying to put the concept in the terms of C. So if you understand C very well, there will be no difficulty in understanding the Tannenbaum book, right? But let's say you have some trouble in the understanding the C language, then we may have to switch to the Porozon or we may have to switch to the Lipschutz. So that's why I said in the early session that as and when there is a trouble in understanding a concept from one author, we have to switch to the other author. Okay. <clears throat> Any other query questions? What about Instagram? That has been answered. When you graphic card, that is also been answered. Okay, any other doubt? Okay, uh, nice uh, to interact with you guys. So we will start with our content uh, in the next section, that is tomorrow morning at 9, sharp 9. So see you in tomorrow session. If you are allowed to leave the meeting, no issue. Thank you. <laughs>